now is something that everybody wants to do. And of course there's mass transportation, but at the end of the day, people want individual transportation. And the motor car is going to be here for a very long time. The death factor on the roads is alarming. And it's a human problem. It's not a car problem. It's not an engineering problem. It's a human problem. And if we don't do something about that, we're going to see these escalating to unacceptable figures. If that number of people died from any other part of life, it would be a scandal. The door would be closed in a lot of opportunities, but this is not the case. So we are indeed not getting better figures in actual totals because people like living in China, there's more cars, there's more driving permits in China than the combined total of the United States of America and Canada. And there's more driving licenses held in India than the combined total again of Canada and America. So therefore none of them are really all that well educated at all. And as we all know, education is the basis of the future. We don't have as good education as we should have. I lost most of my friends driving racing cars. Uh, Helen and I counted 57 people killed on the track that had been in our home. We had holidayed together, we traveled together. We were close enough to say that many folk during my period as a Grand Prix driver. Terrible. At that time, it was the tracks that were the biggest issue. The cars were fragile, but the tracks were incredibly dangerous. You were running into trees, you were running into brass banks, there was no deformable structures. Today, our racing cars are unbelievably safe. Whether you're doing your cars and whether you're doing Formula One, it's a survival cell in a Formula One car today. The motor car itself is now very safe. The seatbelt factor has come, which was really neglected for a great number of years. I was deeply involved with the British government in getting compulsory wearing of seatbelts. It took a long time. <coughs> and even today, it's the young people who are putting the seatbelts on, the kids are putting the seatbelts on before the adults. Because we don't need it, apparently, as adults. <laughs> but the impact of an accident on the road, most people have no idea what it feels like to have a serious impact, even with seatbelts on. So therefore, it's educational. I think we could get more benefit from deeper education within schools. Now, the school management would suggest there's no more room for any more subjects to be brought in. But what's most costly is human life. So in motor racing, I was able to change the motor racing safety just because I happened to be world champion at the time. In 1968, we lost four drivers in four consecutive months on the same weekend. Jim Clark died on the, fifth, on the 7th of April. My teammate, Mike Spence, died on the 6th of May. Ludovico Scarfiotti died on the 7th of June. And Joe Slesser died on the same weekend in July. And Joe Slepper's accident at Rouen in France, it was a magnesium car he was driving, it exploded and they couldn't get the fire out. There was no fire extinguisher capable of putting the fire out. It was an amazing fact. They didn't stop the race. In those days, we didn't stop the race. When Piers Cummings died, we didn't stop the race in a fire. We were driving through the flames. I won the Grand Prix driving through the flames. The track wasn't closed for a short while, while they could clear up the wreckage. And there was no medical facilities to speak of either. So there was a lot of change required. What you all are involved in here is getting change made. Now we're well down the road from where we were, but we're still not there. 
road accidents are horrendous. 45.5 million active driving records in the United Kingdom in 2014. 785 car occupants killed out of a total of 1,770,000 deaths. This is, we're talking Britain now, in 2013. 222 million licensed drivers in the USA in 2016, 40,000 crashed in cars and died in cars. 40,000 people. And yet we've got seat belts, we've got deplorable structures in our cars, but we're still having deaths. Youth is a problem. The enthusiasm of getting a driving license is one of the big things. When I got my driving license at the age of 17 in the UK, it was the biggest day of my life. I had independence. That independence, unfortunately, as the insurance companies will supply you with, it's a much higher cost of insurance for young people than it is for the more mature. Because they're just so excited to have independence on the road, to be able to travel. But they're inexperienced. In, in Britain, there's 40,000 teachers of driving. They're not really registered. They're really not fully trained. And there's 40,000 of them. But it doesn't match up with the deaths. Seatbelts, great. I also was deeply involved in getting compulsory wearing of crash helmets for motorcyclists. Now every cyclist should be wearing a helmet if they're going to drive on the road because the number of deaths we're having now in the United Kingdom of cyclists, it's, a, it's affecting car drivers and motorcyclists, but the cyclists themselves seem to want to own the road. But they don't pay any road fund tax. So therefore there's a lot of things we've got to look at. In my case, I was able to do it because I was world champion. And when I won my second world championship, I had a different attitude. They were more used to the idea of hearing the issues that we had to have changed. We can't just have big, heavy walls to run into, big trees that were unprotected. All of that was done. We now have deformable structures. The Australian Grand Prix here. Look at the accident that Alonso had last year and walked away from it. Mm. So we have to do that, but we have to do it in the road just as much as we have to do it in the racetrack. So why not? It's a big job, big undertaking, but it has to happen. In China, there's 310 million registered owners in China. So there's going to be a lot of accidents. In my particular case, I never drew blood from my body driving a racing car. But there's a lot of English people to say that a Scotsman has no blood. <laughs> but I was very, very lucky. But it was because I was careful. I didn't drive fast enough to have a really big accident. I actually never drew blood from my body uh, driving a racing car. Life has changed. What you're doing, the people in this room, is an amazing amount of good attention to detail. I'm a dyslexic. I can't read, I can't write, I don't know the national anthem, I don't know the Lord's Prayer. I can't do them. But I do think outside the box. That's what we have to look towards. Because the motor car's been going along for a fairly long time, and our public roads are too. Most of my life I'm living in Switzerland at the present time. We've got more speed bumps in, in Switzerland than I think any other country that I can think of. People don't like them. But in villages, in little villages, in small towns, the speed that we travel at is unacceptable. In Switzerland, when you get fined for speeding, and they've got a hell of a lot of cameras in Switzerland, the fine is based on your wealth. A friend of mine had a wee car, a red car, I can't remember the name of it. It's Italian, I think. Um, and he was fined 300,000 Swiss francs for the speed that he was doing. 
you start that in Australia, I'm no coming back. <laughs> um, I think what you're doing here and having it at the Grand Prix of Australia, Victoria is famous around the world now because of the Grand Prix, because Formula One is absolutely global. And the populations around the world, driving cars now have never been greater than they are. So therefore, what you're doing here, associated with the weekend of the Grand Prix, can give you even more of a lesson. So I really hope that as much help can be given as possible to make driving safer. Drink and drive, you cannot have. That is an absolute must. I've just done a commercial for, for Heineken. It's gone all around the world. It's been one of the most successful commercials ever. Don't drink and drive. But don't keep telling everybody that they cannot drink and drive. What's the alternative? Very easy, actually. The other driver. You've got to have the designated driver. Yeah. And that designated driver should be applauded. Yeah. It shouldn't be the, pardon my French, oh shit, I'm the designated driver. It's much bigger than that. They should be praised for being the designated driver. And that applies to all of us. We can do that. And that, I think, is one of the biggest things that Heineken are now doing. They're doing it alone, but they're doing it with several racing drivers. My life's changed an enormous amount. Helen, my wife of 55 years, has been diagnosed with dementia. There's no cure, there's no preventive medicine. I'm going to give you a little film, I think. Is that correct? We've got that signed up. My son, Paul, likes to play the guitar. He got taught by George Harrison, who used to come to this Grand Prix. And he sings a bit too, but he also writes music. So he decided Helen had a birthday the other day. And this is brand new. It's only been seen once before, and it was last night. Um, Paul did it, but Mark, my other son, or our other son, um, makes films. He came down here to launch his Last Man on the Moon, for example, uh, not too long ago. So I'm going to let you see this. It's just because dementia is so important in my life now. I'm seeing a woman who did all my lap charts, all my timekeeping, beautiful woman, suddenly having something that I can't help her with. I've got no cure for it. I'm going to make a cure. It's going to be young people. We've got to go to youth. They established and haven't done it for 30 years with billions being spent. And there is no cure. So therefore I want to change that. So Mark and Paul together made this little DVD. I'll step down and you can see it and I hope you'll like it. It's it shows a beautiful woman coming through an amazing life. And uh, I called her this morning at 20 past five, uh, but she will not remember that I called this morning at 25 past five. So it's really a very sad thing. And a whole lot of people in this room will have relations who have sadly had dementia. So my biggest challenge in my whole damn life now is to get a cure for dementia. So I hope you enjoy the film.
to if you fly.